the most important skill that you could ever learn in your life. The most important income generating, human nature understanding, best, 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 best skill you could ever learn in your life. That's what I'm going to talk about today. But before we do that, please, I need to inhale your validation. So please like, comment, subscribe if you're on YouTube because I need you to or else my body will shut down and I will go into a coma if I don't get enough validation, okay? All other platforms, please comment, share with your friends, all that good stuff. Okay, today we're gonna talk about the most important skill that you could ever learn. It's actually a set of skills. This set of skills is called marketing. There are complementary skills to marketing, sales, persuasion, everything in that general bucket is the most important skill or set of skills that any human being can and should learn. Marketing, sales, and persuasion influences everything. The smartest people in the world are not academics. They're marketers. People who focus on the academic notions of life don't understand that for the most part, we operate on our low-level lizard brain. Human nature allows people to be persuaded and moved mentally without their permission. So if you go to the grocery store and you look at the counter and you laugh at the National Enquirer or those magazines that say one little trick to get rid of belly fat in 10 days or less, there's a reason why those magazines are there. People are buying them. People say they don't read clickbait, but they read it. People say they don't buy product X, but they buy it. Marketing, sales, and persuasion influences the entire world. If I were to take every high school kid, I wouldn't send them off to college at all. The first thing I would do is I would give them a bunch of copywriting, marketing, sales, and persuasion books. Good ones are um, Influence the Psychology of Persuasion, uh, The Boron Letters, um, how to write a good advertisement, anything by David Ogilvy, Claude Hopkins, um, all different types of people who will teach you marketing and sales. And then after I gave them some copywriting books, I would have them go be a used car salesman, go start an agency, go freelance and learn how to sell and market things because sales and marketing is pervasive anywhere. Um, there's a book, I have, actually haven't read it, but it's called To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. And he talks about the fact that sales is not just about getting customers to buy products. It's about getting people to do what you want them to do. Getting people in general to do what you want them to do is a skill that helps you move up in life. It's not just for marketing and business. Getting people to do what you want them to do is important for social skills, networking, dating, organizing, leadership. If you don't know how to move people, if you don't know how to get into the core of human nature and persuade people, you are not going to live the most successful life you possibly can. And this doesn't mean you have to make money. Mother Teresa knew marketing. Martin Luther King was a master at branding and marketing. It's a skill that pervades every area of life and there are some simple ways to learn it. First, you just need to try to sell something. And this process of sales is learning what people want and simply giving it to them and convincing them why they should buy it, right? So you have to find out what problems and pain points people are having and then you offer solutions in the form of a product. You have to figure out what people aspire to be in life and you can offer that in the form of a product. So there's that saying, people don't buy drills, they buy holes. People don't buy fitness programs, they buy bodies that look good naked, energy to play with their kids, and longer life. People don't buy self-improvement books, they buy a transformation. People are looking to transform. The things you learn through marketing and persuasion is that on the whole, pretty um, human beings are pretty similar and they want a lot of the same things. Humans are often driven by fear. They are driven by loss aversion. They are driven by pain. And then also on the other side, they're driven on hopes, aspiration, and status. Why do you think people wear things with logos on them? We have a deep-seated nature to want more status because it goes back to ancient times where if you were in a nomadic tribe, 
and you lost status and you were kicked out of the group, you literally would be abandoned and you would die, right? So we still, with all of our technology, we're still cave people and we still operate on that level. So if you understand human nature, if you understand things like evolutionary psychology, if you understand that people are for the most part still animals, you can learn how to pull their levers. And you'll learn a whole bunch of persuasion and marketing tricks that work really well. Um, I saw a video of these people who they brought a ladder and they walked into a movie theater and got into the movie for free by bringing a ladder. Why? Because walking in with a ladder plays to authority bias. If people see you as an authority, if you look like you're, you know, some maintenance crew, they're not even going to stop and ask you. Go put on, you know, a doctor's coat and you're instantly going to get authority. Simple things like that. There is mere association. Just putting yourself next to credible people. That's why, you know, you see some internet marketers always quoting famous people in their videos. It's because you, through mere association, it makes you think they're credible. Anchoring. That's often why you go on an infomercial and at first they'll start with a price for the product that is ridiculous and that you'll instantly say no to, but then they'll walk it back to the price that they want to get, it, get you to. That's why when you go to a liquor store, there is a shelf of super expensive bottles that almost no one will buy. And then there is a shelf that has shitty liquor on it that you don't really want to drink. Then there's that middle product that is a little more than you want to pay for, but it's you know of better quality than the crappy product and then it's not so bad compared to the high price product so there's all different little tricks like that um reciprocity when you go into a car dealership they offer you water they offer you coffee in your mind you want to reciprocate favors that are done to you um confirmation so one thing people do to try to get you to say yes let's say a salesperson walks up to you and they say do you like to travel? You say yes. Do you like to travel often? You say yes. Are you looking for good deals when you go out to travel? You say yes. If you could travel at a dramatically reduced price and go on a bunch of vacations and it fit your budget, would you do it? Yes. So they just got you to commit one, two, three, four times to the type of person they want that product to fulfill. So you just answered a bunch of questions saying that you're the type of person who likes to travel and is looking for discounts. Then if someone offers you a travel membership where you get discounts, you don't want to feel like you're inconsistent with what you just said, so it's more persuasive. And this is what marketers do. They combine all of these different things. They combine your fears and frustrations. This is why, you know, when you go on the six o'clock news, they'll say something like, find out. What new disease is killing six-month-old babies? If you're a mother with a six-month-old baby, you're watching the six o'clock news because your fear, they tapped into it so deeply that you have no choice. You know, so on the negative side, the media, which does a very, very good job of marketing and persuasion, plays into fear, outrage, high arousal emotions. On the same thing, on the other side, you know, kind of sleazy internet marketers will play to your vanity, play to your need for status, to play for your wanting to keep up with the Joneses and sell you uh, how to get rich and be a millionaire next week course. And both polls seem ludicrous, but the underlying marketing works very well. So you need to understand what these marketing levers are because it's, it's just a way to influence people. And if you know how to influence people and attract an audience, you can do whatever you want, right? So I'm not really a very, I mean, I think I'm a good writer, okay? But there are a lot of writers who are more technically gifted than I am, but they don't know marketing. They don't know persuasion. They don't know how to put the right words and the right structure to get people nodding their head yes in agreement, feel like their mind's being read, and by the next thing you know, they're down to the end of the page wanting to interact with me because I've learned marketing. So what you should do if you're dead broke, get some copywriting books. Get some marketing books. Maybe I'll put some in the description. Find something to sell. Go on Shopify, $30 a month. You could start a drop shipping website. Start learning a skill to freelance. Start going out. Try to do a local car wash in your community. Learn how to sell, learn how to build, learn marketing, and the world can open up to you. All right, that's the end today. U2.0 is the book. If you haven't gotten it, please do because it'll make me because it'll make me feel great. 